Here I'm going to give you five tips for passing values from one macro to another macro. And we're going to start out very simple, so I've got you covered if you're a beginner, but I've also got a very nice little treat at the end that's more advanced. And if you want to download this file, there's a link to it in the description of this video. Now make sure that you subscribe and click the little bell icon to get notifications if you like this tutorial. The more of you that subscribe, the more tutorials I can make. Also, a little note, if you ask questions about this tutorial, or really anything underneath this video, if it's more than about two weeks old, I will probably not see the comment. But you can head over to the forum on teachexcel.com, ask your question there, upload a sample file, sample code, and it's much easier to help you. But now, let's go to the VBA window and get started. Alt F11, and go to Insert Module. And you don't need option explicit up there. It's a nice thing to have, but it does require you to declare your variables. But uh, let us start off with macro 1. And how about macro 2? And macro 2 is just going to be a very simple message box. So let us start out with how do we call macro 2 from macro 1? It is very, very simple. Call macro 2. And then we run it or hit F5. And there we go. So that is the baseline for what we need to do. And now let's expand that and add arguments. But I really quickly do want to make sure that we are on the same page with this here for call. You do not need call in front. I think it's helpful when you are just starting out, but it's not required. So it will still work. And in just a moment, we are not going to be using call, so I wanted to make sure that I covered that. And the downloadable file has additional comments and notes that basically summarize everything I'm saying here. So it's very helpful to download that file. But now, let's go ahead and copy this guy and make it macro 3. And I will get that smaller. And now it's time to pass a value. The very simplest, easiest way to do it just type a unique name for your new variable, my message. And now we will grab that. And instead of outputting hard-coded text, we will output whatever is sent to this macro. So how do we send it? Well, call and macro 3. And now this is my message. That is it. Play. And there we go. This is my message. You have now successfully sent a value from one macro to another macro. And to note that when you use call, you must use parentheses like this. If we do not use call, so let's copy that, go down here, remove call, then we can remove the parentheses. And I will comment that out, run this. And there we go. Just a little thing to take note of if you're going to switch between these two, but I suggest just choosing using call or not using anything at all and stick with that. And now let us go for macro four where we can control the type of the value that's passed to it. And I'm gonna put this guy right here. Let's go macro four. And let's say that we want a number and only a number. So we will call it my number and go as long. So it is just like when we declare a variable in a macro, dim my value as long, except for you do not have the dim. And long, by the way, is just a very long number. I'm not going to be covering types here, or at least not that much. But now let's go for a message box. This is a number and my number control space to fill that in. It's a great way to save time with your declared variables and arguments or parameters. And comment that guy out. Let's go for macro four. And first, let us pass it some text and see what happens. Play, type mismatch error. So we must send it the correct type or we are going to get an error. So now let's send it 47. 
this is a number 47. And if you're new to this concept, you may wonder, well, why do I want to do that? Why don't I just allow everything to be input? Then I don't have to worry about what I input up here. Well, if you want to perform a mathematical calculation down here on the input, well, you probably want to make sure that you're going to get a number instead of text. And the larger your code base gets, the larger your project gets, the more important that becomes. And now let us go ahead with macro 5. And here we're going to have multiple arguments. Macro 5. Let's go with my message for the first one and my number as long for the second one. And name these whatever you want so long as it's easy for you to understand and there's no spaces or funny characters. And now this guy can hold anything, but this must be a number. So we are just going to output my message and concatenate a text value in there and then my number. And now let us go up here and call this guy macro5. And for the first one, let's give it some text. I am value 1. And the second one, 47. So just like that. And now run it. And there we go. I am value 1, 47. And for the most part, these examples here are going to cover almost every scenario where you need to send a value from one macro to another. But now let's get a little bit more interesting and have some optional arguments. So sub macro 6. And if you want to make an argument optional, all that you do is type optional. And then the name of the variable, let's call it not required. And let us declare this as a variant. This is the default type that can hold anything. You don't have to write as variant for it to be a variant, but it's nice to be explicit. And so now we can call macro6 and give it nothing or give it something. So let us test that out right now. Let's just go with message box hi. And we will change that shortly. Macro6, run it. And there we go. And let us give it a value now. Red. Run it. No problem. Of course, we haven't used the value yet, so let's make this more useful. But one thing to know before I get to that is that if you have any optional arguments here, they must come at the end of the list. So you cannot now have my value like that. That will not work. You have to take that guy and put it at the beginning like that. So optionals always have to come at the end, but you can have multiple. So you can have multiple optional values if you want. Just make sure the names aren't the same. And it's that easy. So now let us use them. And you can also give a default value for this, but I'm trying to keep this tutorial on track and not make it too long. And there's something more interesting that I want to show you, which is if the variable is there or not, that can affect your code. And you have a nice little function, is missing. So if it is missing, this will return true. That means that this value was not supplied. If it is not missing, so if a value for it was supplied, then this will return false. So we type the name of our optional argument and make a little if statement, else and if. And I'm going to go ahead and take my value off because I don't want it. And let us just make a very simple little message box. A message box, not here. And a message box, I'm here. So I'm not going to use the input from this. I just want to show you how you can supply it and how you can check for it. So let us call this without the optional argument play not here and with an optional argument let's bring back a red play I'm here optional arguments aren't used as much but they're very helpful when you require them but now let us do something very very interesting and this is where it gets a little bit more advanced Let's say that we want to pass a single or multiple values, but we only want to use one argument for it.
Now there is a little trick to allow you to have multiple arguments here at the end and not have to say how many there are, but I don't think that that is as useful as what I'm about to show you next, at least for things that I work on. So we're going to create a new one, sub macro seven, and let us give this guy a nice crazy name, single or multiple values. You probably wouldn't want to make a name that long, but that's okay. Single or multiple values as a variant. So we are going to declare this as the type that can receive anything, which means it can receive a single value, a number, or an array. And an array is a list of items. So we can very easily send this multiple values now. But the thing is, your code has to prepare for receiving a single value or multiple values. And you don't want to have, because you can have a lot of code here, and you don't want to have a bunch of checks throughout the code saying, okay, if this is a single value, then do this. If it's an array, then do this, over and over and over. That's very annoying and difficult to maintain. What we want to do is to just make sure this guy is an array no matter what. And then the rest of the code can just deal with it as if it's an array, because it will be. So all we do is a little check. If not is array, so if it is not an array, then singular multiple values, then and if. And all we do here, that equals array. And there we go. Now it will be an array no matter what. So let us now have a little bit of fun with the output. Am I an array? And use the isArray function now. And let's go for another message box here. What do I hold? And a little bit of formatting, vb new line, vb new line. And let's go to the next line. A join single or multiple values, and we will use this guy. And now we can go up here, macro seven. I'm a single value. Run this guy. Am I an array? True, yes you are. Even though I only gave it a single text value, which was not an array, we made it into an array. And there's the value. What do I hold? I'm a single value. Now let us make the one that will be an array of values as a variant array of values equals array value one, value two, and value three. Now we call macro seven and give it the array of values. And let's run both of these one after the other so that we can see that both are working just fine. Play. Am I an array? Yes, you are. What do I hold? A single value. And next up, the actual array or the value that was sent as an array to begin with. Am I an array? Yes, you are. And what do I hold? Value one, two, and three. And there you go. Now, believe it or not, there are even more things that you can do with passing values between macros, so between functions and subs. But these five tips are going to take you a very long way to doing pretty much most of what you're going to need to do. But if you'd like to learn more, head over to teachxl.com, and I've got so much stuff there for you.